Virtualization, disaggregation and the telco edge are very hot topics in the telecom sector. And I'm talking about these trends today with Ido Susan. He's the founder and CEO at DriveNets. Ido, great to talk to you again. Hey Ray, good to see you. How are you? Yes, good, thank you. So let's start with the, the big picture. What is DriveNets strategy, its vision, its solution? And why disaggregate the router? The main challenge that today most of the network are still designed and built on top of the hardware-based solution. And in order to um, support uh, the demand of the traffic, they require every day to go and to roll out more and more equipment and capacity to the field that creates the network more complex and more difficult to maintain. Um, DriveNet Vision, it's basically to solve this problem. How? The same way that um, VMware and um, other players uh, like uh, Public Cloud uh, did it in the past for uh, compute and storage in industry uh, by converting the solution from hardware base to a software base. And this is what Drivenet is doing. Basically, we are converting the network, the highest scale network uh, industry from hardware centric to software centric by um, disaggregates the, 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 the data pass function from control and management orchestration. Um, we convert the data pass or the platform to be um, white boxes, open and unified as a shared resource, and the software will running on top as a multi services that share the same resource. Okay, so what would you say is the, the real differentiation of drive nets as opposed to the other solutions out there in the market? First, our uh, product is available. It's a real product, um, up and running. It's a carrier grade, and you, you are able to go and to, to buy it and use it. Second, I think uh, the amazing momentum and the um, you know, partnership that we are getting from um, the industry. If it's a chipset company, the ODM that manufactures the hardware, um, the, the, the VAR, the local uh, distribution that's selling the hardware and doing the rack and stack, the optics companies, and of course, we're bringing the angle of the software. I think this ecosystem, it's very strong, and uh, this is what helps us to, um, to, uh, um, to address the entire market needs. Because in the end of the day, where, where, when you are selling a software-based solution to um, telco or to the cloud provider, you need a tanky solution, including, uh, um, of course, all the capability of the networking and the, the operational tools and uh, um, the support 24 by 7. Um, but also you need the people on the ground that will be able to support you if you need required RMA and other activities. So I think the ecosystem, it's very strong. It's, um, it's getting more and more momentums, and even the incumbent are taking part of um, taking, um, you know, um, are start to be more and more involved because they know that um, the industry has changed. And like um, the compute and storage in storage industry, if they will not do the step, <clears throat> they will be like um, IBM in the past that selling uh, um, the most of the servers in the world, and now they are out of this business. There's a lot of talk a lot of headlines at the moment about the telco edge. But in your view, what exactly is the, the telco edge and, and what are the opportunities there? We also, um, the, the last announcement from the big players such as uh, Microsoft, Google, AT&T, Verizon, etc. Um, I believe that it's a transition that's going to uh, and already taking place in this industry. Um, it's a win-win. Uh, for the cloud provider, it's a huge opportunity to expand the revenue by offering um, more uh, workload for telco um, and, for, and also to build the next generation of the cloud um, provider for uh, low latency application. The third party will be able to develop on top of this infrastructure. Uh, from other hand, the win for the telco um, that they will be able now to consume the cloud and networking services um, as a software technology from um, um, the cloud providers. So I think it's a win-win. And I believe that um, this is the, the, 
the beginning of uh, January that um, um, happened, uh, the same happened uh, with IT world 10 years ago, now starting in the service provider in, in, in about 10 years. For now, what we will see that all the industry um, or all the telco will have the edge computers part of their network and part of the technology that will consume as a service from the cloud provider and part of the um, technology they will continue to run uh, as um, on-prem uh, solution. I will call it like uh, what we're familiar with, a uh, hybrid mode from the cloud providers. Okay, but for a network operator, why would they turn to drive nets for their telco edge rather than, say, a Cisco or Juniper or Nokia? From us, it's uh, it's a native to run uh, like another workload on the edge compute because we design and build our technology to be a software-based solution. Um, for, for the incumbent uh, to go and convert their appliance uh, solution to be as a native cloud, it's almost to start from scratch. Um, and, um, you know, part of the momentum, the good momentum that the company has today, it's uh, the combination, the partnership with those uh, uh, cloud provider. Um, and um, from technology perspective, I think that um, we are the best uh, architecture to support um, uh, the opportunity to run more workload on top of the edge compute. So you're clearly seeing an opportunity at the telco edge, but what other kind of application scenarios or solutions is DriveNet supporting? So we start our journey with uh, the most challenge uh, network space because we like challenges. Um, so we design and build our first uh, network use case for the P function for core and aggregation. Uh, the routers that require thousands of uh, port density of 100 gig and 400 gig. Um, later on, we added more. We we added more uh, network function for uh, PE like peering and um, internet uh, traffic and also metro. Um, and in the future, as part of our roadmap, we are working to add more capability to the access. But in the end of the day. Um, the network cloud to fit uh, are going to fit to any need or any um, network network use case from telco or cloud providers. So, Ido, your background is actually in radio access networks, and obviously, five G is the the real talk of the industry a lot of the time now. Why not focus your your new company, your latest company, just on five G? First, we, we are working and supporting the 5G architecture and we're providing solution. We are working together with our customers um, to support uh, the, the C run, the centralized run, and also the O run, the open run, with a BBU pooling architecture. Um, I believe that in the future, what we will see that um, the wireline and the wireless will be as uh, will, will be consolidated and will be like as a one network again that the infrastructure will be open share resource and the, the software will running a multiple um, software functions that uh, sharing the same infrastructure um, so um, you know yes i coming from the run uh, space but um, networking it's networking and i believe that um, in the future those two worlds will uh, be combined to as a to a one world okay so i mean we're still really at the the early stages of 5G, uh, there's a lot of innovation to come ahead of us. How do you see the market evolving over the next five years, say? I see, you know, today we are working with most of uh, the biggest tier one service provider in the uh, US, in Japan, uh, Europe, and uh, also the cloud providers. So we are getting very good momentum and more and more uh, customer are uh, uh, try and develop and uh, testing our technology, some of them already in commercial. Um, and um, I believe that in the next five years, we will see the same trend that happened in, uh, again, with VMware or with a cloud provider in the cloud, in the compute and storage industry. We will see here in the networking that the customer will buy commodity hardware on the shelf, open, and just selecting the best uh, software solution to uh, run the network function with the best uh, cost effective. And um, I think this is, will be the best practice to any um, network that want to scale to operate with the best uh, cost per bit. Well, thanks for sharing that, that vision of where the market's going. It's been great to talk to you again today, Ido, and thanks very much for joining us on Telecom TV.
Ray, thank you very, very much and uh, take care.